Welcome to a brand new episode on this channel. This video I've been sat on since about November and I'm not even joking. Most of you have probably already seen my garage transformation by now on some of my other platforms, on some of my other content and even in some of the videos on this channel. You've already seen this but that's not the point. The point is it's the journey that's the beauty in life. The end result's the end result. Takes seconds to appreciate. Anyway, before we go a little bit more off topic here, I wanted to say, we have got brand new owner beanies in both camo and snow camo. We are a little bit late to the uh, beanie party this year. We were a bit slow, but you know, beanies last forever. So main deal right now on owner is that you get a free t-shirt with any single hoodie that you get on the website. So if you're getting involved with one of our donut lilac hoodies, make sure you add your free t-shirt to your basket and you'll get it for free. It's that simple, free t-shirt, every single hoodie that you order on the website, go and get involved. Also, we've got new rose gold owner stickers, which have just dropped on the website as well. Simply Google owner and we are at the top of Google. Now, before we cut back a couple of months, so you can enjoy the journey of the garage transformation. I wanted to remind each and every single one of you that watch this channel, that you can actually watch me build this garage, this very garage that I'm stood in. You can watch me build this garage from start to finish on this channel in some of the older videos. Now, let's backtrack two months or so where we can see how this garage began its new renovation. Let's go. As you can see behind me, the garage is an absolute mess. Welcome back to the channel. Me being me, I've taken on a brand new project. I wanted to do a quick little shout out to Travis from Travis Autos. He sold me his old garage units, which are all around this garage right now. And we are about to do an insane garage transformation. I'm gonna be restoring all these units. There's a lot of dust on these units, like a lot of dust. I got them second hand off Trav. There's the left one. There's the right one. He's massive. I've already taken one drawer out over there because I'm about to jet wash all of this dust off these. So I've just jet washed the first one completely out. Look at the difference in that. Just from one pass on the jet wash. And I want to make a full detail and section here. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So I've split the big one in half, and then I've split the next big one in half. One's been washed just now. Okay. So, we are getting on quite well here. I've actually laid all the cupboards out. I'm screwing them all together now. I'm using 40 mil bolts with nuts on the end. Drilling through both sets behind the door. I've laid them all out. I think it looks well better at the back, me. It's gonna be like this all the way along that wall with this workbench. What I might actually do though is carry the workbench on all the way to the wall. So there's a gap here and I might put my radiators snug underneath. So it has been a mad few days, literally haven't stopped. In the end, I got that over 
filming clips where I was changing my mind that I just thought, you know what, I'm going to just put these cabinets in. I'm going to come back and show you and just do some detail bits because I didn't want you to come along with the emotional roller coaster of what I was actually doing with them. They look unreal. So I'm going to flip these round. These are the split in half ones, which are obviously a bit taller. I think it looks unreal like this. I flip the desk round so the desk's like brand new on here. Needs obviously staining, but we've got a fresh desk. Obviously I had to cut it a bit shorter because this isn't as deep, meaning we've got a tiny bit more room for more vehicles now. More space around the car and stuff. Obviously these are high end, like heavy duty as well. So I can just throw all the stuff like my pressure washer. I'm going to spray paint the doors because the doors come off super easy and I'm going to roll the paint the frames black again. I thought it would look pretty factory to have a bit of an overhang off this one. So I overhung the top here. As you can see, that's the, the taller ones. Then it drops into the... I had a smaller one for the middle and a set of drawers. Well, I decided the drawers were pretty clapped out because they've been in Travs for so long. So I've removed the drawers, removed all the runners, and I'm keeping this one for my buckets for like washing and putting them away and stuff. So that's all sorted, all in. And then I ran the desk all the way to the end for my MacBook, and then I added the overhead units, like so. Nice, nice. So I'm just using some cheap black paint from b &Q. It's pretty much the most affordable one they do. Just because why not? And it is just a factory basic black. We will see how it performs. I'll let you know. And then I'm using some sort of roller tray kit. See how that performs as well. I'm sure it'll be good. So the plan is I want to paint the top, and when the top's dried, I want to paint the bottom. We'll see. Oh, that's quite nice actually. Looking like it should only need one coat. Sometimes when you paint, paint, you kind of don't know how it's going to be until you get going. But actually, it seems to be taken to the grain quite nice. Murder out. Full murder out on the scaffy boards. To be honest, this paint is actually taken quite well for emulsion. You don't know really what you're ever getting with emulsion. Sometimes it can be cheap crap that doesn't work. I think with the black, the wood, showing the wood grain nice as well. So obviously I've got a little bit to do, but that's just one coat. Looks sick. So obviously when that dries, we'll flip it over. I'm going to do the front edge so it looks proper steezy along that wall in black. I think it's going to be sick. Still a bit wet. The old, um, the old shelf's still a bit wet, but I'll just touch it up where I pick it up so I can get it up. Put two brackets in. Oh, mate, that looks sick. Hell yeah. Look at that. One in there, and I've done them all along the upright of the timbers to carry the weight. And I've put a solid screw in the bottom one, and then just sort of like a semi solid one in the, the top one. But check that out. So that's one shelf painted black installed. As you can see, looks cool. I haven't screwed it yet into the tops. Coming in with another service update. Check it out. The shelving unit is in all the way across. I'm going to flip you around and show you. So I painted that wall to put it in solid all the way along this wall, same as that wall goes all the way to the end. So now it's just the wooden feature wall at the back. I think it looks a lot smarter. So obviously that's drying, and then I've put the other shelf in all the way along. And then now we've got to try and figure out where we're going to put these to hang the bottles on. But I was thinking just somewhere like that, if you get me, with all the bottles hanging from one side all the way to the other and then all the bigger stuff at the top. So, as you can see, it's progressed quite a lot since that last clip there where we put the shelves in. As you can see, I've organised my space. I'll go through that in a second with you. But it's just so much more spacious in here. I actually took all of this 
corner section out as well. Moved all of my trade stock to the office, moved all of my gazebo and all that stuff to the office. So this corner now is just totally empty. Them floor tiles are from my trade stand. When I go to the car shows and stuff like that, pit bike at the moment, which is definitely going to be an up and coming video once the ribs are fully better. We're going to send it on the pit bike. That's going to be good. A good series of episodes, actually. Obviously, you can see how well the car fits into this garage as well. It's pretty mental. Nice and wide. It's crazy. Right, all the way to the left. On the right, we have the classic toolbox where I keep my cameras, I keep my machine, DA polisher, paintwork, few miscellaneous bits in this container. We have microfiber piled up there. We have the Mac Pro. I don't even know what they're called. I can't even remember. I've had this 10 years. It's an old girl. Still works though. My radiators are tucked in underneath that little section there. My buckets are in the section that I've ripped the drawers out of. Then I have my main stuff, which is like the refillable bits that Auto Finesse sent me, which is pretty cool. I also have this magnetic paint correction light. Magnetic, obviously, underneath there. I have a few random bits in there, like air fresheners and rotiform. Spigot rings. Just random bits and pieces. Then I have my media cupboard, which has got a camcorder, a few other wires and gimbals and cables and fire extinguishers. Nothing crazy. In here, I keep my hoover with all the nozzles and connections. Pretty chilled. Then we moving on swiftly, we've got all my bottles hung up on these rails that were in the last clip. As you can see, I've hung a rail up all the way along. All my re all my hangable bottles. So we've got you know bits of quick detailer, air fresheners. Then onto the Auto Finesse bad boy. Auto Finesse is my favourite brand to be fair. They just do cool user friendly products. I really like them. Then we've got all the bottles that aren't hangable on the top. Auto Finesse. We've got a bit of Auto Bright Direct. We've got a bit of Gion, Gion, however you want to say that. Obviously with the Chemical Guys stuff. Auto Glim. And then in this corner we have all the heavy compound stuff. So. That's for polishing, actually cutting. Then we've got all the nitty gritty detail and brushes. We've got waxes, we've got gloves, and we've got air fresheners. And then we've got the mirror bright stuff, which I really like. Um, I actually won a fresh setup of this mirror bright stuff at Edition 38 for winning the best Mark 7. There you go. Then we've got a little tub with all bits and pieces in. These are like rug cleaners, um, exhaust cleaners, exhaust polishers. We've got all sorts of bits and pieces. Low down here we've got the blow, which is to blow off any existing water because it marks your paint. We've got the pressure washer tucked in there. And I'm not even going to open them two because they are carnage, I'm going to be honest. That brings us to now, which is the end of a DIY garage episode. How cool is that? It is absolutely insane. Just looks banging. When I come in and I'm like, ah, I want to do something to my car, I walk in and I'm like, Oh, that's sick. So yeah, pretty chilled. There you go. So in a future episode on this channel, what I would really like to do, I would like to take the garage doors off and I would like to roll a paint all the bottom frames and spray paint the doors and then the whole place would be legit. So that's going to be a future DIY episode when I'm either want to make some content. I also actually wouldn't mind painting around this door black because that's a weird greeny wood color that i don't think you need so maybe i'll actually do the cabinets and the door in another episode for a diy sesh it's good it's good so yeah that's going to be the end of today's video make sure you get involved in the comments below don't forget we've got brand new beanies in both camo and snow camo on ownerofficial.com or google owner you'll see us at the top 
Also, we've got a crazy deal, which is a free t-shirt with every single hoodie on the website. So if you're ordering a hoodie, add your favorite t-shirt to your basket and you'll get it for free. And more important, make sure you tune back in and check out another future episode on this channel. Thanks for the support. I'll see you next time.